In this video, I'm going to share another customer service tip for handling angry customers. I'm Jeff Mowat. For over 30 years, managers have brought me in to work with their teams on how to boost customer loyalty. And one of the most challenging things that we find out there is when we're dealing with angry customers who become abusive. Now, when I use the term abusive, uh, we want to be careful about that. If somebody happens to swear in the midst of describing how there was a foul up, well, I'm, I'm not condoning swearing or cursing, but the reality is, in, in your experience, have you ever been cut off in traffic and you ever found that maybe words escaped from your mouth that we wouldn't want to have little kids listen to? Well, you know, I, I confess it, it, it's happened for me, I guess, in, in life at some point. So before we become too self-righteous about a customer becoming upset, recognize that, you know, some customers have got stuff going on in their lives uh, and they have had a bad day and they are just kind of venting on you. So where possible, try to avoid taking it personally. Now, at the same time, yes, we are paid to take the heat because we're actually paid to do this for a living but we're not paid to take abuse. So it's one thing if a customer swears out of frustration, it's another when a customer swears at us. And if that's the case, something for us to keep in mind is that our status needs to be equal status with a customer. Yes, we need to be respectful to customers, but we don't need to become a doormat. In that case, if someone swears at us, which is more commonly on the phone because they're distant and it's usually they're more brave. In that scenario, here are a couple of words and phrases that I hope you find to be helpful. So the person swearing at us on the phone, we'd say, um, sir or ma'am. Now, typically, I encourage you to not use the term sir or ma'am with a customer. It makes them feel old. But in this case, for the record, you are being absolutely respectful. So we go, sir or ma'am, I want to help you. But when you're using that language, it's preventing me from focusing on resolving the problem. So I'm going to ask if you can resolve this without using that language. So in other words, if we've given them a warning, if they continue after that, sir, as I said earlier, I do want to help you. I'm not going to be able to help you when you're using that language. So I'm going to hang up now. Please do call back later on and I'll take care of you when we can do this without using that language. Goodbye. And we hang up. Now, a few things that we did there is we gave them permission to call back later on because, yeah, maybe they're losing it. And I also said goodbye before hanging up. I didn't just hang up on them. Now, for smart, one of the first things we should do after we essentially hang up on a customer is certainly go to our supervisor and forewarn them about the encounter. And that way, if and when the customer does call back and talk, ask to speak with the manager, then he or she will be aware of the situation. And they can say things like, yeah, and if you're going to be that abusive to my, my employees, I'm going to ask that you deal directly with me or, you know, this is not going to be a fit. I'm going to ask you to do business elsewhere, that type of thing, which is a whole different seminar. But the main objective is, yeah, okay, at times we need to take the heat. That's, that's why we're paid to take the heat, but we're not paid to take abuse. And I hope you'll find that some of those phrases and terms and strategies are helpful. And if you like this video, I think you'll love my tips. You'll find them for free at jeffsbusinesstips.com. See you next time.